Hi, my name is Joe Scheinberg and I'm a software engineer at Intel. In this video, we're going to be discussing the RealSense SDK's face scanning functionality. A code sample and documentation is available online that discusses these techniques in detail. The code sample can be broken up into two parts. The first part is the face scanning portion and the second part is the face mapping portion. The SDK provides alerts to the developer to allow the application to inform the user where to move their head. Once the head position requirements are satisfied, the scan can begin. Keep your facial expression fixed while you rotate your head from left to right. Ambient lighting conditions are important for good color quality. The scan can now be viewed along with face landmark data provided by the SDK. Now that we've completed the scanning portion of the sample, we can talk about how we can apply it in a game. The first approach would be to cover up the edges around the face scan model so you can't see them. Some games, however, might want to have a more in-depth approach where they need the entire head model to be present. This is the approach that we'll be using in this code sample. The first step in this process is to render the scanned mesh with an orthographic projection matrix to generate a displacement map and a color map. The next step is to create a projection matrix using the landmark data from the scanned mesh and the head model. We will use this projection matrix to transform the vertices from local model coordinates into texture coordinates that are used on the displacement and color maps. Now it's time to render the model. We pass in the displacement and color maps generated in the first step along with the projection matrix calculated in the second step. The mesh will need to be rendered with a custom vertex shader and pixel shader. The vertex shader will be sampling the generated displacement map and offsetting the Z value of each vertex by whatever is in that map. The vertex shader uses a sample from the displacement map to offset the Z value of each vertex. The pixel shader then samples the color map and uses it to blend between the head model color and the face scan color. For both the pixel shader and the vertex shader, an artist authored control map is used to control the blending between the head model properties and the face model properties. This control map allows for smooth color and geometric transitions between the head model data and the face scan data. This entire process can be done offline and then the model can be rendered as a simple basic model. There are two main steps involved in doing this pre-processing and they both occur in the vertex shader. The first part is to export the transform positional data. The second part is to have the vertex shader return the texture coordinates of the head model instead of the positional data. This will result in a final rendered texture that can be used as the diffuse map on the head model. The code sample uses this pre-processing technique and can be used to export the final head model to an OBJ file format. Thank you for watching this video, and please see the links below for more information.